The first step in forging S45C couplings is heating the steel to a temperature where it becomes malleable, typically around 1200 to 1250 degrees Celsius. At this high temperature, the steel is soft enough to be shaped without breaking, but still retains its overall integrity. Once the initial forging is complete, the next step is to remove the surface scale that forms on the steel due to oxidation. When steel is heated to high temperatures, a layer of iron oxide, commonly called scale, develops on the surface. This layer can negatively affect the quality of the coupling if not properly addressed, leading to surface imperfections and potential weaknesses. The scale is removed through various methods, including brushing, blasting, or using chemical treatments. The clean surface not only enhances the coupling's appearance, but also ensures that the next steps in the forging process can be performed with precision. Beginning the shaping process, crafting the basic form after removing the surface scale, the next crucial phase in forging a coupling from S45C steel is the shaping process. This step marks the point where the steel is transformed from a raw, roughly processed piece of metal into a form that closely resembles the final product. In free forging, this stage is critical because it lays the groundwork for the precision and refinement that follow, ensuring the integrity and functionality of the coupling. Flexibility and manual control in free forging, one of the key advantages of free forging is the flexibility it offers during the shaping process. Unlike closed die forging, which uses preformed molds to dictate the final shape, free forging relies on the skill of the craftsman or machine operator to adjust the form of the material manually. This allows for custom designs, enabling the creation of parts tailored to specific requirements. The forging team can adjust dimensions, modify contours, or fine-tune specific areas of the coupling based on real-time feedback during the process. This adaptability is especially useful for prototype parts or small lot productions where standardized molds would not be practical. The actual shaping process is performed using a combination of hammers, presses, and other specialized tools designed to apply force to the heated steel. Large mechanical hammers strike the metal repeatedly, compressing it into the desired rough shape. The force and direction of the strikes are carefully controlled to move the steel into position without creating weak points or distortions. Hydraulic presses are also commonly used in this phase to gradually deform the steel into the necessary dimensions, especially when precise control over the pressure and direction is required. Throughout this process, the steel must remain at an optimal temperature, typically between 900 and 1200 degrees Celsius. This ensures that the metal remains malleable without becoming brittle. If the steel cools too much, it must be reheated to avoid damaging the material or making it more difficult to work with. This heating and cooling cycle can occur multiple times depending on the size and complexity of the coupling being forged. The goal during this stage is to produce a near net shape, meaning the rough form of the coupling closely approximates the final product, but still requires further refinement. This near net form ensures that subsequent steps, such as refining dimensions, adjusting height and finishing the surface, are easier and more precise. The forging process at this stage creates a strong, dense structure in the steel, enhancing the mechanical properties of the coupling by aligning the grain flow in the direction of applied force. Refining the shape, precision and detailing, once the rough shape of the S45C coupling is achieved, the refining process begins. This step is crucial for transforming the near net form into a precise and detailed product that meets the specific dimensional and functional requirements of the final part. Unlike earlier stages where the focus is on general shaping, refinement is about achieving accuracy, smoothness, and ensuring the coupling's strength and performance characteristics. In the refinement phase, the steel is subjected to additional rounds of hammering or pressing. These steps gradually smooth out any irregularities left from the initial shaping process. 
Each strike or press is more controlled and deliberate, targeting specific areas to remove imperfections and fine-tune the coupling's dimensions. The operator or forging machine makes minor adjustments, reducing any excess material and bringing the coupling closer to its final size and shape. Dimensional accuracy is a key focus in this stage. The coupling must meet tight tolerances to ensure it functions properly in its intended mechanical system. During refinement, precise measurements are taken and adjustments are made to achieve the exact specifications. This might involve slight changes in thickness, width, or contour, ensuring the coupling will fit perfectly in the machinery or equipment for which it is designed. The skill of the operator or craftsman plays a critical role in this phase. Since free forging doesn't use molds, achieving accurate results relies on their expertise. They must have a trained eye to detect slight deviations and adjust the process accordingly. Their ability to balance force and precision ensures that the refined coupling not only functions effectively, but also has a smooth, aesthetically pleasing surface finish. Adjusting the height. The final step in forging couplings, adjusting the height is the final stage in the forging process and one of the most crucial steps to ensure the coupling meets precise dimensional requirements. The coupling's height is a critical factor in its proper function within a mechanical system, as even slight deviations can lead to misalignment or performance issues in the equipment where the coupling will be used. This step requires careful measurement, fine-tuning, and expert control to ensure that the height is within the necessary tolerances. Importance of height adjustment in mechanical systems, couplings are used to connect two shafts, and their dimensions, including height, must be exact for the system to operate smoothly. A miscalculated height can lead to problems like misfitting parts, excessive wear, or even failure in transmission of torque or power. As such, the coupling must be crafted with precision to fit perfectly within the specified space. Adjusting the height is often the final adjustment made after the refining process has ensured the coupling's overall shape and other dimensions are correct. The height is adjusted after these steps because it is easier to control this specific measurement once the rest of the form is already close to its final dimensions. Even though height may seem like a minor aspect of the part, it plays a major role in ensuring the functionality of the coupling. Compression of the steel. In some cases, the steel is reheated to ensure it is still malleable, and the height is adjusted by compressing the material further using hydraulic presses or forging hammers. This method is effective when only a slight reduction in height is needed. Care must be taken during this compression to maintain uniform thickness across the coupling and prevent any warping or distortion that could affect other dimensions. Controlled compression ensures that the height is reduced without compromising the structural integrity of the coupling. Material removal. If the coupling is slightly over the desired height after compression, the adjustment may involve removing material from the top or bottom of the coupling. This is typically done using precision machining techniques, such as milling or grinding. Removing small amounts of material is a highly controlled process, and it ensures the coupling meets the exact height specifications. This approach allows for fine-tuning to bring the coupling within tolerance, particularly when the height needs to be adjusted by very small margins. Throughout the height adjustment process, accurate measurements are critical. The coupling must be frequently measured using precision instruments such as calipers, micrometers, or height gauges to ensure that the height remains within the required tolerance. These measurements are continuously compared to the specified dimensions to ensure the part will fit exactly in its intended application. Even slight deviations in height can lead to significant problems in assembly, so careful attention is paid to ensure the final height is exactly what is needed. Depending on the complexity of the coupling's design, there may be multiple height adjustments in different sections, further complicating the process. Each adjustment is handled with care to ensure that the coupling's functional aspects are maintained while achieving the precise height. 
Once the height has been successfully adjusted, the coupling is gradually cooled. This cooling process is critical for preserving the mechanical properties of the S45C steel. Rapid cooling can cause thermal stresses that may lead to cracks or internal weaknesses in the material, which would reduce the durability and longevity of the coupling. To avoid these issues, the coupling is often cooled in a controlled manner, either in the open air or by using special cooling techniques, such as furnace cooling or immersion in oil, depending on the steel's properties and the desired outcome. Gradual cooling allows the steel's internal structure to stabilize, ensuring that the material retains its strength and toughness. It also helps prevent warping or distortion that might occur if the coupling were cooled too quickly. Forging is one of the most time-tested and reliable metalworking processes, offering high strength and durability to the final product. Among the numerous methods, free forging stands out as a versatile and cost-effective option, especially for producing large couplings made from S45C steel. This material, a medium carbon steel known for its strength and toughness, is well suited for applications requiring high impact resistance, mechanical couplings. The forging of S45C couplings through free forging is a highly skilled process that involves multiple stages of heating, shaping, and refining. Each step, from forging the large coupling to removing surface scale, shaping, refining, and adjusting the height, contributes to producing a durable and precise mechanical part. This process is not only cost-effective compared to other methods, machining from a solid bar, but also provides greater flexibility and strength in the final product. Despite the decline in companies practicing traditional free forging, its value in producing high-quality parts like S45C couplings remains significant, ensuring that it will continue to be a vital manufacturing technique in various industries. Hot-formed tank heads are essential components in various industries, including oil and gas, chemical processing, food production, and transportation. These heads form the end caps or covers for tanks and pressure vessels, ensuring structural integrity under high pressures or temperatures. Hot forming, as opposed to cold forming, is particularly advantageous for producing large, thick-walled, and custom-shaped heads where uniformity, material strength, and precise geometry are critical. Hot-formed tank heads manufacturing involves heating a metal blank a flat, round piece of metal, to a temperature high enough to make it malleable, then forming it into the desired head shape using presses or dies. This process allows the metal to stretch and form without cracking, particularly in situations where the material thickness is significant or the tank head geometry is complex. Material selection. The first step is choosing the appropriate material, usually carbon steel, stainless steel, or other alloys, depending on the intended use of the tank head. The choice of material depends on factors like corrosion resistance, operating temperatures, and pressure ratings. The most common materials include carbon steel, saw 516 grade 70, stainless steel, and even exotic alloys like Hastelloy or Inconel for extreme environments. Heating the blank. The metal blank is placed in a furnace and heated to temperatures between 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit and 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit, 650 degrees Celsius to 1,200 degrees Celsius, depending on the type of material used. The goal is to soften the metal, increasing its ductility and allowing it to be shaped without tearing or introducing stress fractures. Hemispherical heads are strong and offer efficient pressure distribution, commonly used for high-pressure applications. Elliptical heads are often used when space constraints are a consideration, but still provide good pressure resistance. Torospherical heads are the most economical, but require thicker walls to handle the same pressure levels as the other shapes. Advantages of hot forming hot forming offers several advantages over cold forming for tank head production, particularly for large or thick walled heads. 
material integrity. Heating the metal improves its ductility, reducing the risk of cracking or other defects during forming, especially for thick materials, complex shapes. Hot forming allows for the creation of more complex or custom shapes, which might be difficult or impossible to achieve with cold forming. Reduced residual stresses. Hot forming introduces less residual stress into the material compared to cold forming, which improves the overall structural integrity of the tank head. Thicker materials. Cold forming processes struggle with thick materials, but hot forming can handle thick blanks, ensuring uniformity and strength in the final product. Applications, hot formed tank heads are used in various industries that require robust and reliable containment solutions, including oil and gas. Hot formed heads are used in pressure vessels, storage tanks, and separators that withstand high pressures and harsh environments. Chemical processing. Tank heads used in reactors, distillation columns, and containment vessels require resistance to both pressure and corrosive chemicals. Food and beverage. Stainless steel tank heads are essential for cleanliness and hygiene in food grade tanks. Transportation. Tankers carrying liquids or gases under pressure, such as LPG or anhydrous ammonia, use hot formed heads for safety and reliability. After the forming process, the tank head often requires trimming to ensure a perfect edge. This is typically done using a lathe or a plasma cutter, depending on the thickness and material. Finishing may also include machining and polishing to achieve the desired surface finish, especially for heads used in the food, pharmaceutical, or chemical industries, where surface smoothness is critical for hygiene and cleanliness. Depending on the material and the intended application, the tank head may undergo additional heat treatment to relieve internal stresses that develop during forming. Heat treatment can also enhance the material's mechanical properties, such as its hardness or tensile strength. Common heat treatments include annealing, normalizing, and stress relief annealing, which are performed in controlled environments to achieve precise material characteristics. Hot formed tank heads are subject to rigorous inspection to ensure they meet the required specifications. Non-destructive testing NDT methods, such as ultrasonic testing, radiographic testing, or dye penetrant inspection, are commonly used to check for internal flaws like cracks cracks or voids. Dimensional checks ensure the head's diameter, height, and thickness conform to the design specifications. For pressure vessels, the heads must comply with standards such as the ASME, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, Boiler and Pressure Vessel Code, BPVC, which mandates strict quality control measures for pressure retaining components. Hot-formed tank heads are vital components that ensure the safe and efficient operation of pressure vessels and tanks in various industries. By using heat to shape the material, manufacturers can produce heads that meet the rigorous demands of high-pressure environments, thick-walled designs, and complex geometries. The combination of material selection, careful heating, Precise forming and strict quality control ensures that hot formed tank heads perform reliably, providing long service life under challenging operating conditions. To manufacture an anvil ring, first, high quality steel, a tool steel or carbon steel, is selected for its durability and strength. The steel is heated to a malleable temperature, typically around 1,200 to 1,300 degrees Celsius, making it easier to shape. The steel is then forged into the basic ring shape using a power hammer or hydraulic press. During this stage, the material is worked repeatedly to achieve uniform thickness and remove any impurities. Precise shaping is critical to ensure a balanced, even ring. Next, the ring undergoes heat treatment, which involves reheating and quenching it in oil or water to harden the steel. This process strengthens the ring while maintaining some flexibility. The final heat treatment step is tempering, which reduces brittleness by reheating the ring to a lower temperature. After the heat treatment, the ring is machined and polished to smooth out any rough edges and achieve the desired surface finish.